Welcome back to The Dot is Black, I'm David. Let's continue where we started in the previous video. Let's talk about video export and the three methods. I will talk about Save Frame with Movie Maker, Video Export Library by Abel Pazos and Screen Capture. And by the end of the video I would like to I will compare them and also summarize and show you also which perhaps which method is suitable for which case when you record. Each of them has strengths and weaknesses and we will find them out in this video. I'm sorry, but during the editing I realized that the video became almost 45 minutes long again and it is fully packed with information. So I decided to split it up into three individual videos for each video export method. You can find the video links in the video description or here both in the cards or at the end of this video. So this hopefully will make it easier for you to focus on each individual method. Perhaps the most important thing is the third video with the final summary and conclusion where I compare each method in the table and you can get a much better idea about the strengths and weaknesses of each method. That said, thanks a lot for your support, especially thank you to all patrons and members of this channel. You make this tutorial content possible. So let's talk about Save Frame with Movie Maker, the first method. So here we have the sketch from the previous video. Uh, it's this rotating rectangle around the center. Now, if you want to export a video, we just use here in that case Save Frame and we specify which path it is. So we, I say usually frame 01, a folder, processing or creates a folder for that. Then I say, please include the uh, frame counting to it. And I use a PNG file. Don't use JPEG files if you want to export with this method because JPEG files are usually compressed and they will be the edges especially or the, the, the colors will be not very nice and crisp. So PNG is uncompressed when you remember the video on image types and it's very nice, perfectly crisp. Additionally, uh, I add here exit, an exit function. So after it's finished, after it's finished at a particular length, it should close the window. So I also know when processing stopped exporting the images. Otherwise it can take forever. So that's usually quite helpful. And I say here, if alpha is 180, bigger than 180, it should exit. 180 equals uh, to 360 frames, basically. And 360 frames, if I export this video as a 30 frames uh, per second, it will be 12 seconds video, or at 60 frames, it will be six seconds video. Now this will take a bit of time, so let's do some time lapse. Okay, so that was quick, more or less. Let's have a look at the folder. So I press Ctrl K to open up my, uh, my Explorer, and I, we see already here the folder frame 01 that we here specified before. Let's check. And here we see all the frames that we generated, each individual. And we have 361 frames because I said bigger than 180, so it uh, stopped at 180.5. So I can delete this, or I just can keep it, whichever way. All right, now I take the path, copy it, and go to processing back, go to the tools, and use the movie maker, open up, specify here where, is the, where are the files, each individual. Uh, individual frame. Then I specify the frame rate, so I keep it at 60 because I said before also in the previous video for motion it's better to have 60 frames per second, it's much more smoother. And then of course same size as the originals. If you don't do this then you can change the size of the window. But I do like to have it the same as in my sketch. Okay and then that's it basically and then we press create movie. Now I have this folder and I keep it the same file and then I save and it takes a bit of time as well again. Okay, that's done. Let's go back here, the previous folder. Okay, there we go. I delete this temporary file. Now we have here already this file and it's quite large for just only six seconds video. Um, it's quite a lot. So we have about seven megabytes. Let's check a bit the uh, uh, properties. We go to the details and then I can see already it's 60 frames per second. The resolution is 1080 by 1080 and the bitrate. You remember bit bitrate is very important in terms of quality it's almost 10 megabits. This is very, very good. So that means this file is uncompressed. It's perfect. Yeah. So if you have 10 megabits per second for such a small sketch, it means uh, the quality is very, very high. Okay, now if I open the file, you can see I use here VLC player and it's not very smooth to play. Likewise, if I open up with uh, Microsoft Media or Windows Media Player, it will tell me that it cannot play. Um, I could probably set it up somehow, but I don't need, to, I don't want to necessarily. So the problem with MOV files are that you 
cannot play them in every single player, so not all players will work with it. Best option is to use the QuickTime player for MOV files. So here's my MOV player and then just press play and it's nice and smooth. So that works very well. We have six seconds footage. Amazing. So it makes this nice loop. Okay, perfect. Uh, the movie file, MOV file, you can always use them in Premiere or wherever. So there is no problem actually playing. So you would not really play the uh, uncompressed file. You just use it in to, for editing. All right. Remember this um, graphic? the process of how to make videos and when we look at save frame particularly the process that we did right now save frame is actually generating directly video data so it exports every single frame and then with the movie maker you directly create an mov container so there is no coding or encoding involved in that case basically we skip this part that means we have an uncompressed file and that's usually extremely good it's very very good particularly for highest possible quality video editing. So if you have a high quality video production, you should use this option. Additionally, please don't forget, use PNG files. Otherwise, if you use JPEG, it's going to be compressed already so you don't get the same nice crisp quality. You can test it also, of course, by yourself. If you don't use PNG, you can also use TIFF files, but TIFF files take more time. So they're bigger than PNG files. So PNG is perfect for that. And additionally, of course, it's a lossless format uncompressed so that means every time you save the file again no problem the quality remains the same that's great actually so that's the best option for exporting videos for high quality video productions